To God be the glory. Well, stay on your feet a second because uh, David Barton got me all fired up. I mean, really fired up, you know. I, and if you don't, if you don't get loud, I'm going to bring him back up here because every word he said was like a laser. And uh, didn't it, it got you worked up, didn't it? How many of you are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Because it is, because it is the power of God to everyone. Put your hands in the air. I'm, I'm a spirit-filled believer. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe that right now people could be healed in this room. That signs and wonders could break out. The most encouraging and powerful thing is for us to feel the presence and the power of God. Because that's where the faith is going to come for us to take this nation back. We need an upper room. How many of you know we need an upper room? So I want you to pray in the language of the Spirit right now. And if you don't have a prayer language, why don't you get one right now? Christ is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. And Father, I thank you that your army has finally assembled. Let your fire fall on us, Lord. Let your glory and your anointing come upon us. Turn every leader, every speaker, every preacher in this room into a lion right now. Get rid of every bit of fear and discouragement and confusion. And let them, oh God, know precisely what they are to do. We thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to know that I'm going to speak directly to you. And I want you to understand that uh, I am an evangelist. People ask me what I am. I say I'm an evangelist. See, when I think of the word evangelist, I don't think of what a lot of people do. I think of Dr. Billy Graham, who brought integrity to ministry, transparency. And for the shadow that he has left on my life, I've got to tell you that I am a very, very uh, addicted soul winner. You know, I am. I'm going to tell you, if, if you're carrying my luggage to my room, that's your problem. If you're sitting next to me on a plane, that's your problem. Because I know in whom I have believed. How many of you have seen too much, felt too much, been through too much to ever apologize for the gospel of Jesus Christ to anyone? That's right. So you may be seated. We better get busy. I hope you love me at the end of this as much as you claim to now. I do not do conferences. You always want to start on a positive note. Because I feel that so many of them fit the description in the book of Nehemiah when Nehemiah was building and the troublemakers kept wanting to have meetings. And so David Barton brought this back. You did, brother. He said, I'm building a wall. That's why I love Nehemiah so much because the Lord told him to go back to Israel and rebuild the wall and make Israel great again. In case you wondered where he got it. And he said, why should I come down off of this great work and talk to you. When a Christian conference has gone for 20 years and repeated the same subjects every year, 
and nothing in there happened that resonated outside of the event. It didn't lead to anything. It is amazing what can be perverted. You can pervert intercessory prayer, even that. Moses did it, standing at the Red Sea. And God said to him, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to move forward. We've had events without altar calls. We've had prayer gatherings without a strategy to take back the nation. There was never any sense that we were doing anything but virtual reality. And one day, we're gonna get so stirred that we're actually gonna change and do something. Wokeness is creating a moment of the largest harvest of souls in American history. The greatest manifestation, as, as again, I'm referring back to David Barton, the revivals that forged America began locally. They were local fires. Then there's something that the fire, the forestry service will tell you is a phenomenal moment in firefighting. It's called area ignition. And it means that several fires are burning in a forest. And what they don't want is for them to come together into one fire. And that is called area ignition. In the revivals of Finney and the others that our brother mentioned, these spot fires became area ignition. And suddenly there is a cultural reformation. That's what's going on. Now, I read John chapter four, verse 35. In the living Bible, it says these words. Do you not say that the harvest is yet far off? There are still months, and then comes the harvest. Before, behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look. And this is what he says in the, in the living translation. Vast fields of human souls are ripening. Vast fields of human souls. When we came to Colorado Springs, we brought 1,500 volunteers to the tent. And they, when they arrived, and at their own expense, we didn't even help them get a hotel. They just came. The Bible says, your people be willing volunteers in the day of your power. They were there, listen to me. They thought that they wouldn't have a job. There's too many of us. How are we gonna have 1,500 people? The first altar call used up every volunteer that we brought. I'm going to say it again. The first altar call, we needed every one of them. Now, what ripens corn, we know. What ripens wheat, we know. What ripens a soul? Misery. That's why in Matthew 9, Jesus said, it said that he saw that the people were like sheep without a shepherd. Wokeness is removed hope. If, if you believe in woke, let me be the first to tell you. Woke is a joke. And let me be why. There's not a thing it doesn't take the beauty out of. There's not a thing it doesn't make worse. There's not an iota of anything that woke touches that doesn't make it suspicious and painful and make you feel less and depressed. It is the most single depressing thing. I'm telling you, it is ripening souls. And we're on the verge of the greatest reformation but two forces have got to come together. The soul winning revivalist and the political activist. They've got to come in one stream and we're gonna have the glory of God. But I'm gonna finish. We cannot back down in this conference. We have got to not be those in the Bible that have itching ears. Don't want to be taught, be trained. Napoleon's general said, the object of combat training is not to prepare a man for battle, but to make him yearn for it. We've got to be on the edge of our seat. By the end of this event, we've got to be sitting on the edge of our seat saying, we cannot wait to organize school board elections, to get involved as a poll watcher. We got to have this thing in us that says, that conference of truth and liberty 
It cannot work until it turns into action. We're going to win the laws. We're going to win the elections. We're going to expose the devil. And we're going to take back our country in Jesus' name.